Hola, welcome to my channel, Clear Vision. My name is Simon, and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. As always, please um, like and subscribe, and if you want to hear um, anything else, you want me to answer something else, or you want to leave any feedback in the comments section, please feel free to do so. This week, I wanted to continue on the, uh, the topic of narcissists, and I wanted to look at some of the dynamics that narcissists employ within relationships. And it's important to understand what's going on um, and it's important to differentiate whether it's, an, it's a narcissist that you're dealing with or whether it's not. Which, and it's kind of in reference to last week's video which was about the, um, the development, the evolution of a narcissist from childhood. And I always say in all of my videos about narcissists, um, not everybody is a narcissist um, that you come across who may have some negative, you, have, you may have negative dynamics with. It is a term that's thrown around um, a lot and really easily um, and too much. So what we're looking for, and a bit like um, in the previous video that I did about narcissists, what you're looking for is you are looking for a combination of dynamics, a combination of behaviours which indicate that you are dealing with a narcissist. If there are one or two behaviors which are from are narcissistic, chances are you're dealing with somebody who has um, narcissistic traits or a couple of heavy narcissistic traits and not necessarily a full-blown narcissist. And if you go back to the previous video, this could be some kind of thing, something have happened within their development or something happened within their adulthood, uh, some kind of trauma and they've switched then with regards to a couple of things, they have these heavy narcissistic traits and it's kind of a more of a coping mechanism. So, um, which narcissism actually is? Um, right, where was I going with this before I get too distracted? So yeah, you're in a uh, relationship now with a narcissist and I'm, I'm mainly focused on romantic na uh, relationships here, but maybe friendships as well and what will happen in the early stages is something called love bombing and that is exactly what it what it says it is it is where the the narcissist the supposed narcissist the other person drops bombs of love all around you so it's kind of like oh you're amazing i love you oh i've never felt this way about anybody before i want to marry you da 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 da, da, da. mixed in with that was is probably some idealization as well which goes along with it which is the you're amazing um and kind of pushing you up onto a pedestal what's happening here is the narcissist is showing you is giving you what they want back they're giving you what they want back for themselves that's exactly what's happening but what you have to remember is that this is happening on an unconscious level so that which they never received and like i said if you watched last week's video you'll kind of understand where i'm at with that they are trying to get from you that which they really really didn't receive in in its all all of its uh, pure honesty but it's unconscious so and some people say this is kind of like narcissistic manipulation I, I'm at odds with that kind of term. A lot of this uh, stuff is unconscious. So it's an unconscious response towards a relationship, towards somebody new. Manipulation kind of implies, and yes, I know it can be argued, but kind of implies that there's this kind of intent there. There's this conscious intent. And I think sometimes that's where we get a bit lost with all of this stuff um, when it comes to narcissistic abuse. Not all of it is intentional. Um, eventually, yes, it, it is and it's quite conscious, but in the beginning, it could be quite unconscious um, and it's not necessarily a manipulation. It does, however, draw people in. Of course it does, because most of us like to be love bombed. It's nice, it's nice to have someone adore you and all the rest of it. So. It's, it's very, very subtle and it's, that's kind of where they get into the covert, well, the, I say they, people then begin to talk about covert narcissism and things like that. So you're at the love bombing stage, you're being love bombed, there's a bit of an idealization in there, you're being put onto a pedestal. They are teaching you, they are giving you what they want back from you. Um, now if 
This is also not to be mistaken, and this is where I get into not everybody's a narcissist. This is one piece of the puzzle. Now, if somebody, if you meet somebody new and they do this, you have to look into the reality of the situation. Have they been on their own for a long time? Are they, do they have low self-esteem? Have they suddenly just fallen in love with you really, really quick? Um, are they overwhelmed with their feelings? Are they able to express their feelings you know, clearly, emotionally, uh, clearly and emotionally, express their feelings, yeah, clearly um, and, and maturely, or do they struggle with that? So it kind of comes out as bleh, as a bit of a gush. Um, in which case, that's where you need to decide, you know, uh, yes, maybe a red flag goes up, oh, I think I'm being love bombed here, or oh, there's a little bit of idealization going on, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're dealing with a narcissist. From that, we then move into this kind of, um, once you're in the relationship, now you've kind of been love bombed, you're kind of in the relationship after a while. Okay, now here comes the, the devaluation um, of you and what could be perceived as, sorry, it's the cat. Oh, yeah, hi, uh, <laughs> doing a video. Um, <laughs> They don't care, you little narcissists. Um, what could be seen as um, devaluation, manipulation, and uh, controlling behaviors. Um, so you, hang on, I think. Someone wants attention, I'll be back. <clears throat> they just needed feeding. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we get into this devaluing um, stage within the relationship. So you will start to find that, um, you know, the, the tide is turning and you're becoming belittled, um, maybe humiliated in public, slight put downs, and you'll notice them slight. Everything that happens with a narcissist, with, with you when you're in the, with the, the relationship, generally tends, to, anything that negative that happens, generally tends to escalate. So it starts off, that's, that's where the manipulate, it's covert, the manipulation kicks in. That's where those kind of terms come from. Because it starts off softly, softly, apart from the positive stuff. The positive stuff, that, that's a love bomb, that's a right? That's like, that's like throwing glitter in your eyes, yeah? Um, lights, glitter, fireworks, you're amazing, put you up on a pedestal. Uh, the trouble with being on a pedestal means you can fall off it and so it's kind of, a, it's, it's a trap. Um, and like I say, a lot of this is unconscious. And don't forget these, if you watch the other previous video I did about the evolution of a narcissist, you'll begin to understand these are all coping defense mechanisms which have become so ingrained that they are, and, and they, need, they need this narcissistic fuel supply from you. So they're teaching you, they are showing you, but it's so unconscious, it's so ingrained, they don't even know they're doing it. Eventually, yes, there is, an awareness that they are doing it, but that doesn't really help you um, because the dynamics are the dynamics. What that, well, actually what does help you is looking at your role within that relationship. And I don't, this isn't about victim blaming. This isn't like going, oh, well, it's your fault. But what we do tend to do to varying degrees is we tend to ignore stuff when we're in new relationships. We tend to ignore certain behaviors. We, you know, we might be out with friends there's a put down comment and we, mm, okay, didn't like it at the time, forget about it, ignore it. And that's kind of where we become, and sometimes that's through not lack of knowledge, not knowing what you're dealing with. Sometimes that's lack of self-esteem. Sometimes that's fear of not confrontation or not wanting to be alone. Those things you can look at in terms of how far you got involved with a narcissist before you managed to pull away or before you realized you needed to pull away. And those things can kind of go with any relationship, really. Any relationship that is where you two don't fit very well, why did you stay and, and put, a, um, uh, uh, put up with a lot of stuff for so long? So there's, there's always some learning to do, there's always some self-reflection. But like I say, there's this devaluation, so there's little, little humiliating things, little put downs, building to bigger stuff. Uh, building to actually devaluing you as a person, the things you do, how you are. And it can get to very, very toxic levels of cruelty. The trouble is you have been love bombed. So you tend to 
want a little bit of that back because it's like, oh, well, that was there before, so I must have done something wrong. And it is now they're doing this. So this is all part of that manipulation. This is part of that confusion process to confuse you within the relationship and get you dancing to their tune and jumping around from foot to foot and doing the kind of, you know, uh, well, I'll, I better try harder. I better fix it. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. These are kind of like, you know, relationship abuse. This is normal abuse kind of stuff being employed here. And this is how you can slip into feeling like it was your fault because there's the sudden flip or the gradual flip, but it is a flip. I am looking at notes, sorry, I can't remember everything I talk about all the time, but I'm not reading a script. It's just a manipulation devaluation. Um, <laughs> I'm getting older now. Um, yes, so manipulation control. And other things that can, these can look like, are, you may hear the term gaslighting. And gaslighting is exactly what it is. It's letting off the gas and then setting light to it. You're the gas. They will press your buttons, they will trigger you, they will provoke you and push you until you become angry and then they can stand back and go, whoa, look at you, wow, it's a game. Um, or they can try to make you out to be crazy, um, that's another one, no, you're seeing things, you're hearing things, that didn't happen, I never said that, do you know what you did last night? Uh, you don't remember? Oh wow, you must have had too much to drink because you actually, I don't know, uh, it can be all sorts of things. It can be minor. You broke my phone, you threw it at me, you did this, you did that. Um, and you're sitting there thinking, fuck, I don't, excuse my French, I don't remember that. Did I do that? Holy shit. You start questioning your sanity. And if you question them, remember, you are, everybody in a narcissist's world is a potential threat. Your love is a potential threat. Your feedback is a potential threat. Your Perception of them is a potential threat and your criticism of them is a threat. So you have to be careful how you handle them. And if you do call them out on something, if you do come to them and go, you know, actually, hang on a minute. Oh, I disagree with you. This is not what happened. You stand your ground. Chances are you're going to get word salad, which is another uh, defense mechanism on their part, but another kind of seen as a manipulative technique because it, it's... It is, again, I always think there needs to be an intention to make it manipulative, a conscious intention, but that's maybe arguable. And the word salad is employed to confuse you, to throw you off the track. No, I wasn't talking to your friend like that or talking to that person like that. No, that's not what happened. No, I didn't break that glass and then accuse the kids of doing it. And honestly, there is all sorts of stuff that I've heard happening to people from things being moved, things being broken, bills not paid, etc., etc., then being paid and all sorts of things, and then being given word salad. So much so, and it's really, that it's actually hard to give an example, but this kind of, no, oh, do you remember, oh, no, no, come on, you remember this, and actually what I said was this, and I didn't mean this, and I said that, and actually I didn't say it like that, you've got that wrong, what I actually said was, and my tone, I was feeling fine, you took my tone of voice wrong, blah, 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 and you go, oh, hang on, and then you become confused. Now, why do they do this? Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot as well. Stonewalling is another one. When you challenge them, um, or if you reject them in some way, or if you disappoint them in some way, they will stonewall you. What's stonewalling? Stonewalling is literally nothing. Now, turn, I've known people to turn their backs on their partners at physically, completely, you do not exist. And it doesn't matter what you try, what you do or try, you do not exist. And the whole point of this is to keep pulling you back in, keep pulling you back in and pushing you down, pulling you back in and pushing you down. Because every time they pull you back in, every time, sorry, every time they push you back down, you get back up and you try to fix things. Ah, oh, we go back to that one. Ah, oh, shit. Well, it used to be like this. So maybe if I try harder, maybe if I look at what I've done, maybe if I tell them this, maybe uh, they're right. I must. They must be right because they keep telling me that I'm right, um, wrong, and I've got this, and I can't. Oh no. You know, I've known people actually to go and see therapists and doctors to take tablets, antidepressants, and anxiety tablets because they're paranoid because they think their partner is having an affair even to the point of catching them in the act, the partner has them so manipulated down, so um, confused, that actually 
they are right, their partner is having an affair with somebody else, but they've got them convinced that they are delusional. I've seen that one as well, and it's, it's very, very sad, and it's very, and it takes a long time to undo it. I'm pretty sure I've got a video about getting, yeah, you know, I have about getting over narcissists. I better put these links in the bio, or the, the, the commenty thing, the video top description. Well, I'm not very good at YouTube. Right, uh, <laughs> um, that's what they do and that's why they do it. They want this constant narcissistic supply. They want these, this kind of adoration all the time, someone trying, working really, really hard for them. So they have to put you in the wrong, put you in the wrong, put you in the wrong. They also will have a complete lack of empathy. No remorse, no empathy. They won't understand you. They will never understand your position. They can't. It's impossible. You are actually wasting your time trying, trying to get them to see it. And if they do say that they can see it, often it's a manipulative tactic. Um, so it will be of benefit to them somehow to pretend that they understand you. And they are very, very good. How do we put this? They are very good shapeshifters. They're very good at convincing you um, that of whatever. So we then move on to rage and anger. Narcissists, if you come near them, um, and you may find this, if you do show strength, so let's say they don't manage to beat you down into submission through their various um, tactics, through their various manipulation and control, word salad, etc., etc., and the gaslighting and the stonewalling and the guilt inducing and, and all of this stuff. Let's say none of that works and you just, you, you, or it does work for a while and you come back quite strong. Chances are, and with the truth, chances are you're going to get hit with something called narcissistic rage, which is you may say something, go, oh, actually, you know, and this can be, it can be either a direct, you're directly, so attack's the wrong word. You're giving them a direct, whoosh, quite a harsh truth. You know, quite this is quite an honest truth. This is, this is actually what happened, and this is not good behaviour. And I'm not going to uh, tolerate it. Right? That's one thing. Now, now you're threatening them. That, that's how that's perceived. Um, the other one is um, if you um, uh, kind of something you may do. I'm thinking it's kind of minor some betrayal of some sort, or maybe asking them to do something else or maybe change something. And it, to you it's slight, whatever it is, the reaction is going to be irrational. You're gonna, that's gonna be your, probably your immediate thing, what the hell? So it's this irrational reaction, it's this rage and you're going to get hit with it. And they're going to, and that's because you're getting too close. So what's the best form of defense? Attack, they're going to attack you. Um, and then they're going to try and make it your fault and if that doesn't work then they're going to try and make it their fault and show remorse to get you to feel sorry for them because they've got problems um, and they're trying very hard to deal with it and they do love you and all the rest of it and you'll hear all of that and get more words salad, more lies, more guilt inducing stuff and you are going around this constant washing machine of emotions gradually gradually becoming worn down thinner and thinner fabric of who you are. And then if you, and I hope you do, if you are involved with one, if you manage to leave a narcissist, chances are they will, if they, if you're weak and on the ground and broken after, at the end of the relationship, they will leave and they will probably never turn around and look back. Um, especially if they have another narcissistic supply, so they have another person to go and get all of that from, start love bombing and start the whole process again. If they don't and you leave them and chances are you will leave whenever you leave, they will be like completely bewildered. And again, that's not to be confused with leaving someone and they didn't realize you were actually going to go or they just couldn't believe that you would actually leave and they didn't know how to solve the situation. Again, you need the combination of all of these things, all of these behaviors to then, unfortunately, at the end or when it's too late to kind of go, oh, I'm dealing with a narcissist or I was involved with a narcissist. They will, so sorry, yes, you leave them, chances are, or they leave you and then they, they have a new narcissistic supply and then they lose that, now they're gonna come back to you because you're, you're an easy target still. Or you leave them and they're not gonna handle that, so they're either going to turn you into the worst thing since sliced bread and make sure everybody knows that you were an awful person and it's a bloody good job you left because you were disgusting 
or they're going to try and hoover you up, uh, hoover, vacuum you up, um, drawing you back in, sucking you back in by guilt inducing, making you feel sorry for them, showing you some kind of remorse, showing you something, maybe starting the love bombing process up again. Perhaps they have some kind of almost terminal illness which they'll get over, or their, one of their children does, or their nephew does, or their niece does, or a cousin does. There will be something which they will use to try to pull you back in. Now this is not, again, to be mistaken for Let's say you have an ex-partner, you've left them, generally they've been quite quiet and then they have a tragedy happen in their life. Let's say they do actually have a cousin who's going to die of cancer and they've been on their own for a bit and actually you're the kind of closest, last familiar person that they were with. That's a kind of a natural response to jump back to an ex because you used to be intimate and kind of like seek comfort there, especially if you haven't got a new partner. So again, it's about gauging the situation that you're involved with but if you find yourself being drawn back in and then there's this love bombing bit and then boom, you get a bit of word salad or you say something and you get stonewalled you really really need to leave quite quick because chances are you are being vacuumed back up by a narcissist and you haven't realized they were a narcissist in the first place that is very very brief and quite all the way through um i hope it makes sense um and i'll put the links up to the other videos as well and please feel free to like and subscribe. Please leave any comments. And um, please take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next week. Adios.